Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video looks at how to calculate a network analysis and uh, it's done, uh, it's really uh, about interpreting these network diagrams. So we define network analysis as a management tool that we use to break down a project into its component parts in the last video. And I also uh, showed you a uh, network analysis and uh, went into a little bit about what the numbers mean and we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail now and look how to calculate a network. Um, the key thing to remember is that there are the, the two numbers on the right hand side are the important ones. The number on the left hand side is just a number for the node, it doesn't really mean much, but the top right number in each node um, represent the earliest start time which is the first moment that activity can commence given the activities that need to be completed before it so you know if uh, activity i for example requires the ordering of raw materials then that needs to be done before week 14 because that's when uh, hopefully we'll start activity i the latest finish time is in the bottom right of the node and that is the time that represents the last possible moment the activity should be completed. So we've got to get activity E completed by week 17, or it's going to delay the project overall. So um, we'll have a look at some numbers in here. Right, it is possible that you will be asked to calculate a whole uh, network in an exam. It happened um, in 2016. It was on the old spec, yes, but they did ask the students to calculate a whole network. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, it involves working from left to right to fill in the uh, earliest start times. Okay, so we work from left to right. And how do we do it? Well, we're going to start at week zero. The duration for each activity is in weeks. So activity, so at point one, we can start activities A, B and C. Um, activity A, we know takes two weeks. Zero plus two equals two. Activity B takes ten weeks. Zero plus ten equals ten. Uh, activity C takes six weeks. Obviously, we start that in week six. Okay, now... For our next little set of uh, our next node here, node five, we've got several activities going into it. Before we can start activity G, which node five represents the start of activity G, we need to complete activities D, E and F. OK, so what's the earliest time we could possibly start activity G? Well, activity a takes two weeks and we activity D takes four weeks, so we could um, potentially start after six weeks. However, activity B already takes ten weeks and we need to do activity uh, E as well before we can start activity G. We can't start activity G without doing this. So 10 plus 5 equals 15. Okay, so at the moment, the earliest possible time we could start is week 15. Well, let's have a look. Activity T C takes six weeks, and activity F, which also needs to be completed before we can do G, takes three weeks. So that would be nine. But we've already got 15. 15 is the earliest time we can start this, given that activities uh, B and E are going to take a combined total of 15 weeks. We can't start activity G without doing that. So it's going to be 15 weeks before we can start activity G. Well, let's have a look at um, uh, this activity I. We're going to start it at the start of node 6. Um, so uh, activity C took 6 weeks. We could start activity H then. The earliest time we start activity I, given that, 6 plus 5 is 11. Okay, so we're on 11 weeks plus 1 is 12. All right, but to do activity J, we also need for activity G to be completed. And we remember we can't start activity G till week 15. And activity G takes 18 weeks, uh, sorry, 3 weeks. So obviously that equals 18. So we need to wait for activity G to be completed before we can start activity J, which takes five weeks, which means the overall length of the project should be 23 weeks when we're planning it. Um, so that's the earliest start times, but we also want to calculate if there's any slack at any point. If there's any activities that aren't 
critical to be started as soon as possible. So to calculate uh, what we call the uh, latest finish times, we start at the other end and we work backwards. We work from right to left to do the latest finish times. So obviously um, we would, uh, the latest finish time for this activity is, activity J is week 23, because uh, that's the end of the project. So uh, 23 minus 5, that gives us 18. Okay, so the latest time we can finish activity G without uh, delaying the project is, um, is week 18. However, we're going to have a bit of slack here because um, we could potentially start this in week 11 and it only takes one week. Um, so, you know, if we wanted, we could delay this to week 17. We can't start this to week 18 anyway. Um, so as long as this activity here is completed, as so long as activity H is completed by week 17, then activity I can start and it's not going to delay the whole project overall. Okay, so let's just work across again. So 18 minus 3, uh, that's going to be 15. And I've skipped ahead slightly. Again, we can... Uh, uh, activity D needs to be completed before we can start activity G um, but activity G can't start the earliest possible time it can start is week 15 therefore we're going to have some slack here as long as activity D is completed by week 11 it's not going to delay the project overall so 15 minus 4 equals 11 15 minus 5 equals 10 15 minus 3 equals 12. So again, we've got some slack here. As long as we finish activity C by week 12, um, activity F can then start and be finished by week 15, ready to make the project work overall. And then um, the beginning is going to be 0, 0. So <clears throat> what that helps us identify is the critical path, which in this case, and it doesn't always run through the middle, but in this case is B, E, uh, G and J, because they're the activities that um, do not have any slack and need to be started and completed by their set deadlines.